giving away an unopened box of Lorcana, the first chapter, that guy right there, to one of you guys. Uh, from now until December 31st, you can get a chance uh, to enter for this awesome prize. All you have to do is subscribe and join the Discord channel, which is linked in the description down below. Uh, when you join the Discord, it's going to prompt you to select what content you're there for. Be sure to select the Lorcana tag. That way you secure your entry into the drawing. I'm going to be giving away this guy uh, on January 1st. I'll be announcing it on the Discord. So be sure to subscribe, join the Discord, and may the Disney magic be ever on your side. Do you want to get a second raffle entry for the booster box? Well, at some point during today's video, I'm going to ask you a question and have you leave the answer in the comments down below. So, it's gonna happen randomly in this video. It could be the first game, could be the last game, could be somewhere in the middle. For all you know, it could be in the actual outro of the video. Somewhere, I'm gonna ask you a question. Leave the answer in the comments down below. Everyone who answers correctly, I'll put you in a little mini drawing and on Discord, I'll announce the winner. Uh, I do that uh, every single day. Until December 31st, the day before the actual drawing for the box, Let's see how many people are going to get the additional raffles and maximize their chances of winning it. But, welcome to today's Lorcana Pixelborn video. We are going to be playing a Ruby only deck. The Rage of Ruby. Uh, yeah. So this, following the theme of the last couple of days, we played Steel, which was really good. We played Sapphire, which had a rocky start, but actually picked up and got pretty good. Uh, and now we're going to jump into Ruby. My prediction for Ruby is... It should do fairly well. Should. Uh, so Ruby actually boasts a lot of evasive characters, which I think is going to be a huge boost for it. Let's see. We got Fidget, evasive. Minnie Mouse, evasive. Pongo, evasive. Other Minnie Mouse, evasive. Donald Duck, evasive. Goofy, evasive. Uh, and then Mickey Mouse, evasive. Mickey Mouse is probably a bit of a stretch. <laughs> it's a little greedy, I think. Uh, with his price point on him and no ramp in the deck. Even Maleficent is a little bit out there. Uh, I mean, these cards honestly should probably come out. I'll say that right now. But I at least want to play the deck once with them and see what they feel like. But with no ramp in this color, I suspect both of these cards are just always going to be too far away to be meaningful. Uh, I am running Removal. I'm also running Dinner Bells for our card draw. Uh, maximum copies because we definitely want to get it. Might want to take it down to three and try to mulligan for it. It is uninkable, and there's not there's not a lot we can do with multiples. I mean, technically, yeah, you could sack multiple characters, but it's probably not ever going to be a real thing. Uh, Teeth and Ambitions has a really nice combo in this deck with our Donald Duck. He has evasive, but uh, he gets plus one lore for each damage on him, so we can deal two damage to something. In fact. Another chosen character. Dang. I really was like, wait a minute, can't we just choose him as the thing that has to take the damage for the cost and then target him with the damage and then he just quests for four? No, has to be another character. So technically you could have two Donald Ducks out and spread the love. Uh, got some LeFous for some untapping shenanigans. It's mostly to go with our Maui, uh, possibly Lady Tremaine, other characters if we need them. Uh, we're running Raya, Raya. Uh, as our little version of Scar. So between Scar and Rhea, we only have three copies. Uh, but they both, whenever the whenever another whenever another character is banished in a challenge, you may ready this character. What's cool about Rhea is she doesn't have to be the one to do the banishing. No, no, yes, she does. Whenever this character banishes another character, so it's exactly the same as Scar. During a turn, whenever this character banishes another character, challenge, uh, neither can quest after the fact. Uh, we're gonna run first game as this. Second game, I suspect there will be some changes, uh, so keep an eye out for that. But let's jump in and see if we can't win a few. Ooh, jumping right in. Going second. Hopefully that won't be too big of a deal. Uh, let's get rid of the Lady Tremaine. Uh, let's see, I don't have Little Minnie Mouse, so this is a late play. Don't need the dragon. Dinner Bell's probably a little ambitious. Okay, I don't have the shift Mickey Mouse anymore, but or Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse, not Mickey Mouse. Oh boy! Oh, the back of the card had a thing on it. That was weird. 
All right, we're definitely going to play the Minnie Mouse uh, because we can threaten a tooth and ambitions, teeth and ambitions, even if we don't actually have one. Hmm, do I give up my turn to play for in favor of the Minnie Mouse? Yes, I do. All right. <clears throat> I would like to see one teeth and ambition off the top, please. Would I trade my Minnie Mouse for their board? Probably. Such evasive. But I want to keep my Maui. So they all quest for two. So we're definitely going to get rid of a Pongo here. It's just a little bit more expensive. And you know, I don't really want to deal with that. Now my thought with the evasive is either Dinner Bell never ever really goes off unless we're on the offensive with them, or our opponent is actively trying to deal with our evasive, in which case they eventually get sacked for cards. So we will see. I don't need that many Dinner Bells. Uh oh. We're starting to flood a little bit in our uninkables. Let's see, this deck has 15 uninkables. Yep, definitely going to be cutting one or two of the dinner bells. I think we, because we only really want one in play ever, so all of the additional ones get stuck in our hand and do nothing. But the second you cut them down, you never draw them when you need them. All right, opponent's just going to be just as aggressive as we are. But they're a lot faster about it. Hmm. We're going to risk missing. Missing our Maui on turn five. Having a turn two mini mouse evasive shift probably would have been good. But then again. Uh, becomes a two three. Yeah, it's a better attacker. Mawona. Mawana? Mawona? Mona? Ramona? Let's see, Maui takes down Mickey Mouse. Then Maui takes down Mawona. Mona. And we dinner bell it to draw some cards. Let's see if it's fast enough. Probably not. They're still on plus seven, so that's victory. So I can't win if I just quest. Yeah, this was super unfortunate. I don't know if this was had to, a lot to do with it, but that's three dead cards in our hand right there. But like we said, we're probably gonna probably gonna change the deck after the first game. Because there's just so many uninkables. And sure enough, game one. <laughs> Covenant clutch in the negative direction. Let's see if opponents just quest or if they hold or if they actually play that last card. So I have to dragon fire the aerial because it untaps. And then I think I'm trading the Minnie Mouse here because I want to be able to quest for as much as possible. Opponent's in a really good spot though. Especially if they can double cast. I don't know what that last card in their hand is. 
Maybe it's big stitch for seven. That's why they're holding on to it. Can't do anything with Lady Tremaine, but I might be able to get it down next turn. Oh, the game's teasing me. I'm being absolutely teased right now. So many uninkables. <laughs> Come on, Ink and play that big stitch. Oh, Hades will let him double play. Hades is gonna let him double play. So, what could I get? Nothing? Oh, but they can't play that. Why would they grab that? I mean, I'm not guaranteed a victory. I could draw a non-inkable and then I can't, I just simply can't deal with Hades, but still. I mean, they threw that, right? All they had to do is grab anything else that they could have just played. They could also still have Goat in the deck, right? They are running purple. We could just lose to Goat. Okay, opponent. I don't, I don't know what we're doing here. We're just kind of sitting around, shooting the breeze, uh, looking at cards. All right, something's got to happen. I was going to say, where's this mythical timer that always goes off so quickly against me? Well, there's a be prepared. All the uninkables, man. Let's see. I have, I can't play anything. I just, that's what I'm talking about. I lost the game because of the uninkables. I mean, my only move is to play this. I, there's nothing in my deck. I can't even activate it. I just have to hope my opponent isn't there. I told you the deck was teasing me. I told you it was teasing me. I mean, I suppose all I can hope for is my opponent has got up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and hopefully, not to sound crass, but hopefully it's a number 2Z and it takes a while. Because while the win is actually meaningless, because there's no rank involved, while the win is actually meaningless, I do like to win. But yeah, we are 100% changing the deck. I, I might consider bumping up Scar to 2, I think. Uh, but definitely bring the Dinner Bell down to 2 from 4. Uh, what else would I change? Let's see, looking through the deck. Uh, probably don't need three copies of the Dragonfire, though Dragonfire was pretty clutch there. Uh, the big thing is the Uninkables. I gotta crush the Uninkables. So maybe two Dinner Bell comes down, and one Be Prepared. That's three Uninkables gone. And they're also, I'm also attacking my seven drops there. That'll bring us down to 12 Uninkables. That's a little better. Question is, what would I bring in? Hmm? What would I bring in? I'm already pretty much max copies of everything in the deck except Donald Duck, LeFou, and Scar. Oh, and all, well, all the expensive ones I'm not maxed out on. So LeFou and Donald Duck are the only ones that are not maxed out. Maybe some early aggression, maybe some Gastons for a deck like this. Yeah, I might do some Gastons. Well, there's the mythical timer. Let's see if opponent will actually let it run down. I'll take it. I will gladly take it. Another uninkable! Are you kidding me? Another uninkable is on top. Holy crap. We are 20 cards in. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine uninkables. There's only six left in the deck. There's six left in the bottom 40. I'm telling you, it, bad luck happens to me often. <laughs> Ooh, going first. All right, I did it. Uh, took out one Be Prepared, two Dinner Bells, and brought in three Gastons, primarily to help fix this uninkable nonsense, but also to give us a, some early game aggression. 
Okay, not going to get any early game aggression. Wow, the entire hand is rather expensive. All right, well, if that's the case, a turn three will definitely be of this Minnie Mouse, not this Fidget. Fidget's certainly a late game top deck where you're just like, oh, yeah, okay. It's got evasive. It might do the trick. Or in the hand case where you just don't have Minnie Mouse. Cinderella, Cinderella. Uh oh. Steel Song. And just like that, our game was over. Do I go Mana Efficient here? And just play LeFou? LeFou at least takes out the Queen. I suspect there's going to be a shift. The upside with this Minnie Mouse, though, is it can be shifted into an evasive version. Yeah, post character, ready chosen character. Oh, you can ready your opponent's characters. Interesting. Is there a situation where that's ever good? So we're going to shift the queen out. Oh, we're going to play a stitch. I would love to combo Scar with pick a fight. I think that'd be such a cool combo. Just wipe out your opponent's board. Like, don't even care what they have. Is my turn four going to be dinner bell? Probably. Sorry, Pongo. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. I will not quest with LeFou because we're not looking at trades. We're looking at a queen coming down and LeFou losing all of his power so Stitch can just knock him out. Two Simbas, and they haven't played them for protection. Yeah, they're totally looking to get that shift. Surprise. Surprise. As if the game's not 100% predictable. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's a card. And I can sing it? Yes, I can. Uh, We're running into some issues again, though. Running out of inkables. I'm going to play the bell. I am going to sing the song. I will take out the queen. And now I have something to sack for the dinner bell. Can't believe these uninkables, man. Let's see. It's 12 in the deck out of 60. So it's like every four cards I should get an uninkable, roughly speaking. I feel like I'm getting it more than that. <laughs> oh, there goes the Minnie Mouse. That's unfortunate. Now I got nothing to sack to draw. Uh, gross! This, I'll be honest, this is a game that I would simply just concede right now. But I'm not going to. I'm going to stick it through. But yes, yeah, so if, if the camera wasn't on right now, I 100% would concede to just move on to a more favorable match, especially if it was ranked. Because this is a lot of time to waste on a losing game. We've, And in case you're confused, we have 100% lost this game, and we did technically lose the last game. Our opponent just got up to take a poopy. So, <laughs> their timer killed them. All right, one of the two is going to take out the LeFou, surely. Who do they choose to give up? Probably Little Cinderella. Doesn't do much at this point. Yep. I will continue to quest.
There goes the bell. That's unfortunate because I maybe have a scar lined up next turn. <laughs> You're gonna hit me with the whole new world? You're not. Interesting. Let's do it. <clears throat> Let's trade. I will continue to quest. See, a whole new world gets a little trickier for the opponent. Grab your swords is a no-brainer, though. Oh, not sad beast. That'll be tricky. Surely they wouldn't trade Benja and Ariel to take Lady Tremaine out of play. But they might take down the LeFou. If he's not bad. I mean, I got the same plus points as my opponent. They get way more options than me. <laughs> uh, three damage to something. Take out the LeFou finally. They're so scared to attack. I find that very strange. Another rock star, of course. Hey, another Goofy. I think opponent might have points for victory. Just about. I'm only a plus six. Yeah, the game's over. Like I said, we were definitely going to lose this game. I don't know. Two games in a row getting absolutely just messed with by the uninkables. Which I will say the other two decks have similar uninkable counts. They weren't such a problem. Maybe it's Lady Tremaine. I guess I should probably have cut a Lady Tremaine out of the deck too. Opponent's going off, man. Top decking a scar would be nice, but I think there's still only one in the deck and we used it. Yeah. So be prepared is pretty much the only way. And even then we're in trouble because then opponent just basically gets to play something. And then that's going to be victory. That's not a be prepared. Well, we played for our outs. We didn't get it. We knew right away we weren't going to win this game with the uninkables. All right, opponent, please just quest, quest. I'm prepared to hit the concede button if you can plan to play a card. Oh, oh, I was ready for it. There we go. Thank you, opponent. <laughs> All right. Made some pretty substantial changes to the deck. First one you're going to see right away. I got four copies of Queen of Hearts and four copies of Queen of Hearts, the shifting one. Uh, I took out the entire top end. No Maleficence, no Mickey Mouse. Too expensive for the deck. I cut two Lady Tremaines uh, for the Uninkable. I got rid of both the Dinner Bells for the Uninkable. Uh, doesn't seem bad. I'll keep it. I figured our card draw will be in the Queen of Hearts since... Dinner Bell wasn't working out and it was actively <laughs> being bad to us with the ink ability. Uh, and then I also brought in two copies of, uh, what's the cat's name? Uh, Felicia, always hungry. The three, one reckless has to attack. Just like Gaston here has to attack. That way we can fight off aggro. Uh, but they also are inkable in case the aggro is not the way we need to go. So we kind of shifted from like a long game with some late game bombs to 
Uh, it's probably still going to be a long game, for being honest, because there's no ramp or of any sort in the deck. Uh, but a slightly shorter game uh, with the ability to control the early game. I think I'd rather have an evasive fidget than Rhea. Either way, ink and pass. I have, I has no oneies. There are six one drops in the deck though, so technically there could be a one drop feasibility. So you're coming down on turn three. That's my turn three for here. So you're coming down on turn four. Yeah, that's Pongo. Coming down on turn five. That's more like it. <laughs> coming down on turn five. That way it coincides with another play. So I'm not going to get to Goofy then. I don't want to have to play Gaston. To take down a Gramatala and help my opponent. So we're going to go with the Queen because it can quest. And then we can force my opponent to attack me if they want. But I'm not about to let them get a lore. And a ramp. Maui's not bad. I might need Maui. Might need to hold on to you. Let's see. Turn three is going to be this. Turn four is going to be what? I guess it could be a Gaston and a Queen. But I'd want it to be Pongo, I think. Turn five will be Queen and Fidget. So I'm not playing Gaston, right? Yeah, I'm not playing Gaston. I'll force you to ramp into me. I suppose I could have shifted, taken out the character and drawn a card, but... I don't think that's the right play. Just because it happens to be Grandma Tala. Opponent got to go first, so they're already technically a turn ahead of us. So anytime they ramp, it just gets way worse. Lady Tremaine. Alright, I want my turn four to be a Pongo, I think. So we're gonna... Really? Why? Okay, so, before I wrap it up, before we leave this, uh, as far as, like, accountability or statistics of the deck, this deck going, I'm counting game one as a loss, even though technically it was a victory. Okay, game two definitely was a loss. Game three... I will count as a victory because I did feel we were in a pretty strong position and it's hard to predict where this game would have went. But I did feel our position was really strong. So I am counting this one as a victory. Oh, second. Here I was like, come on, come on first. All right, let's see if I can get Little Queen. Uh, I will keep Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse. Finally got the shift. And I will keep the Teeth and Ambitions in case that's relevant. That's a lot of Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. That's a lot of Minnie Mouse. Cinderella, Cinderella. Aha! Check out my Minnie Mouse. Also, check out my Minnie Mouse. Pass turn. Look at opponent. Flicking their hand. I could do it too. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right. In the comments down below, I want you to tell me who your favorite Star Wars character is. Specifically Star Wars. Tell me who your favorite Star Wars character is and why. That's in the comments down below. That'll be the decoy. Uh, on Discord, direct message me. Don't post it in the Winter's Lorcana Discord channel. Direct message me. Uh, let me know your favorite or what your favorite Disney Channel show was when you were a kid or is now you know I got some young people in the in the audience I want to know your favorite Disney Channel show that's for the direct message 
let's jump in and introduce my opponent to hey have you seen mini mouse <laughs> This mini mouse would be so much better if it actually had two lore. The only action I have in the deck is be prepared and uh no I got Teeth and Ambitions is a, is a is an action. And Dragonfire. So there's nine nine actions in the deck, only seven of which can be played where Mini Mouse actually can benefit from it. <laughs> because the other uh, the other two are board wipes, and Mini Mouse doesn't survive that. Actually, Mini Mouse might survive it in the next set with locations. I don't know. I don't know how the board wipe's going to work with locations. Will the location get blown to bits and all the characters kind of fall out back onto the battlefield, or are they all taken out? Now, I could just do two damage to myself just to get the extra two lore. But I'd probably play Fidget here because the whole new world is coming. Could still sing it, but it's really not. It's not going to do anything. Now, I imagine an opponent doesn't want to play a whole new world just yet. So I like our position. I like that we're ahead of them in this regard. As far as our hand to board presence ratio goes. That's a good target for the teeth. And it does give me something to do on turn four. What's your discard? Another aerial. That's probably fair. You don't want to accidentally snag up another whole new world or something else, and then you have to delay your whole new world. Another Steel Song deck. There goes the Minnie Mouse. That's super unfortunate. That's the one I was going to gain all the lore with! Now I have to blow up Fidget if I want to take out Cinderella? Oh, opponent. Not another fidget. Alright, we're gonna see a big Cinderella. And then they'll sing a song. Well, Cinderella can't attack, so that's nice. The evasive is doing the thing. Do the thing, Julie! That's right, I'm an avatar nerd. <laughs> Completely unrelated to anything going on. But if you're an avatar fan, I also want to know, what's your element? What are you bending? In case you're wondering, the answer is obvious. I'm very much an earthbender. They are the best. Storm. Man, opponent just has all the removal. I sure hope I can get to my be prepared before they whole new world me, but I don't think that's going to happen. There's only two in the deck, so my odds of drawing the second one are very unlikely. Perhaps it's time to consider trading the fidget. Well, if I, let's see. If they play big, Cinder shift big Cinderella, they can sing the whole new world, but it's tapped, so that's nice. Or I take out Cinderella and they get to sing the whole new world for free and get to replay stuff. I think I'd rather see them with a tapped board after a whole new world. We know one of the three cards in their hand is a whole new world. The question is, do they got the Cinderella? They can pay for the whole new world flat out. That's probably the best option. Oh. Reconnecting. Haven't had this issue in a long time. 
Uh, now I got the ugly invalid deck. That clearly says a three right there. Uh, still opponent's turn. So I guess we're just gonna wait for our opponent to end their turn for it to fix stuff. I'm hovering over their hand. It's not doing anything. Well, I can still look at their stuff. That clearly says a three, even though Maui has five. So I'm guessing that's showing how much life he has left. I'm feeling 50 50 about this game right now, so. One bad client issue could really swing the game in either person's favor. I think they have two cards in hand. Still says opponent's turn. Maybe opponent got disconnected too. Ooh. I wonder if it happens to both players. I actually... I have no idea. I mean, I don't know how to contact Pixelborn 90E39D7E854. I don't know who that is. But I'll tell you what, I'll definitely attack Cinderella with Maui after playing Queen of Hearts. Oh, so they said it was my turn, so I didn't even get a draw card or anything? Okay. That's what I'm talking about, a client issue right there. I didn't get my ink back, I didn't draw a card, Maui attacked and now they drew a card? Like, I genuinely just lost a turn. The only reason Maui got to attack is because he has to attack. Yeah, that's super unfortunate. I didn't get my ink back, so I couldn't play queen. I didn't get to draw a card. Yeah, that's, uh... It's pretty savage. There's the whole new world. And they sang it, so they get to act on it. They definitely play some characters, so Lady Tremaine's not going to be nearly as effective. Unless I can find a way to... Well, I can deal with the queen. I can deal with their queen with my queen, get to draw a card. And if they only play one big character, then Lady Tremaine comes down and finishes up the job. Definitely behind on lore. <laughs> An opponent can almost just sing songs for the rest of the game. Okay. That's pretty good. Could wipe the board. I don't have any other characters to play, unfortunately, but I could wipe the board. Alright, let's get rid of Fidget. Hmm, let's see. If I let them keep the stitch, I think we're in trouble. Let's do the trade. Oh, I do got another play. Nice. Play the Lady Tremaine. Now, we've lost a turn against Steel Song, a meta deck. So, <laughs> if Mono Red Ruby can even come close to closing this game. And if we can get to 17 lore, I will have considered that a success. Not a victory, but at least a success. Now, I could flood the board with a bunch of things for attacking. Downside is, they can't quest. So, I'm probably going to play Minnie Mouse and Goofy. Though my opponent's likely going to have a lot of removal. Now, the question is, do they play a song just for the mere fact of flute? Do they just get the storm, let the storm rage on? They'll take out Felicia, and they get a draw card, and they get the point out of flute. So, they'll probably play that. <laughs> yep. You're gonna hit Tremaine though? Ooh! Hitting Tremaine! Weird. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, we'll ink a Gaston. Let's get a Goofy. Let's get a Minnie Mouse. We're gonna quest. I'd attack if I could, but I can't. 
All right, is opponent going to have double swords? We know they've played one already. So there's still three more. Oh, they played two. Two. So they must have got rid of one with the whole new world. There's only two left in the deck. That is good news. That means if they want a board wipe, they have to use the last of their board wipes. And they also have to have them, which in my experience, they always have them. If they have one, they have the second one. They come in pairs from my, from my gameplay experience. All four in the top 28 cards. Is it possible? Let's see, they didn't play bodyguard mode, so they're not planning on questing. They're just playing a big board. I think they're trying to go just big enough that they can swoop the game in one fell swoop. Swoopity swoop. Will Ariel trade the Lady Tremaine just for the sake of... That is lore advantage for them. Storm finishes off Lady Tremaine. We're leaving that Ariel vulnerable though. Alicia has to attack. So they better quest with Simba? No? Okay. Ooh, so here's the question. Do I just take out the board? I mean, obviously, apart from Simba, because that's going to be their game plan, right? They're going to want to try to close things out that way. All right. Felicia doesn't have a choice. I could have drawn the card by playing the queen, but I think this is better. And on the off chance, they let me keep my stuff. They don't hold New World me. I'm going to hold on to the good stuff. All right, let's see if I can get back into this game. It would be sweet to play Queen into Maui. Maui takes out a thing, draws a card. Cinderella, Cinderella. Three, four, five. They could quest now. Opponent's been playing cautiously. I'm almost not sure that they would do that with Simba. I would love for them to. And I'll get it out of my hand in case there's a whole new world. All right, they're on plus five, six with the song. That brings them to 18. They play another flute, 19. If they shift the stitch, that's three, six, seven, eight. They could get it with a song. All right, you know, they need big stitch and a song and they win. Big stitch and a song. Hey, 15. We did that, guys. You and me. Look look at what we accomplished today. Against Steel Song. Steel Flute Song. We did that. Got up to 15. We actually took the lead from them. That's pretty darn good against a meta deck. And you know, the game's not over yet. That's not a stitch. That is not a big stitch. It's not too late. It only costs four. They can still have a big stitch. There's a flute. Three, four, five, six, seven. Do you have another flute? Please tell me you don't have another flute. They could play a whole new world and get the other flute. There's the song. Now they take out Goofy or Minnie because it's evasive and then Cinderella can attack the queen. That stops me from winning. That stops me from winning. But that's lore that they're not gaining. Okay. Now they're going to quest with everything. All right, I need to take down the Simba somehow. How can I take down the Simba so I can take down? I can't. Dang it. Not good enough. I can't take down the Simba. Yeah, Maui can attack it. That's not what I'm saying. I need to get rid of Simba so I can attack Cinderella. 
And I just... I'm not quite there. But look at that, guys. We got all the way up to 19. All the way up to 19. That is absolutely wild. Maui has to attack, so we will attack. Otherwise, I wouldn't have attacked. All the way up to 19 against Steel Song. Steel Flute Song. One of the best meta decks there is with mono color. If that doesn't show you the cracks in their deck, I don't know what does. Their deck can't actually truly be that great, right? There must be something better if a mono color deck could give them that much grief. That's exciting. That makes me excited for deck building. And for the post game wrap, I will say the two games where we actually got the victory screen weren't the most compelling, were they? Uh, no, not in the slightest. They were so quick, so fast, and we didn't actually have a div like a distinct victory. Uh, so that wasn't great. The two games we lost were both against Steel Song. Not sure if the first one was a Steel Flute Song or not. Second was definitely Steel Flute Song. But in both of those games, we got to 18 and then 19 lore before our opponent was able to find a way to win. That's really compelling for a monocolored deck. So, all in all, I'm considering the whole day to be uh, a success. However, I will say my personal guess was that Ruby was going to do a lot better uh, than it did. Uh, I thought Ruby was going to be better than Steel, honestly. But I still think Steel right now is our number one deck. Um... I think Sapphire actually, funny enough, falls in the middle, and Ruby's on the bottom. That's weird to say. I genuinely thought Ruby was going to be right up at the top. Even very close second. Uh, I'm curious what your guesses are. Which color is going to be the best color? Which color is going to be the worst? The order. Uh, let me know in the Discord. There's a link in the in the description down below. It, there's on the Lorcana page or even the general chat. Let me know which colors you think are going to be the best. Uh, I mean, by the time you guys see this video, I should be recording the very last one. So your guesses will be super timely. Uh, yeah, but that's going to do it for today. We made some changes in this deck. Um, we talked about those changes. A lot of it was, uh, the top end and the uninkables were just too much in a deck that can't ramp its way up into those things. Uh, it was too painful, too slow, uh, not enough aggression. But once we started making some changes, we started seeing a lot of improvements. And like I said, Steel Song, man, I cannot believe how well we did against Steel Song. Uh, yeah, still a super fun deck. You guys should definitely take it, run it. There's many different avenues to run with this deck. Uh, but if you guys ever play Monocolor, let me know because it's it's very interesting. Be giving away in addition to that booster box look what I found <laughs> I found the two of the starter decks for the floodborne I can't apparently there's gonna be more boxes uh, coming into stock today uh, possibly tomorrow uh, but I'm gonna go back get some boxes I'm gonna give away these guys as well with this booster box so I'm gonna have a first second and third place prize uh, yeah, that's, yeah. and then, like I said, I'm going to buy another box, so we're going to do it again next month. I'm going to give away another box next month. I don't know what box we're going to get. I'm hoping for Floodborne, because this one is the, the first chapter, so I'd like to see Floodborne, but outside of that, uh, yeah, links in the description for the Discord, so you got to subscribe, you have to be a Discord member with the Lorcana tag to be qualified for the raffles, uh, and then... If you feel so inclined for five little dollars a month, you can be two videos ahead of everyone else with the Patreon link down below. It helps support the channel. And like I said, you get to be two videos ahead of everyone else. Uh, so the Patreon members saw this video two days ago. <laughs> so they knew about this before you guys did. They knew about these before you did by two whole days. But that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.